3D is cool, but it's pretty complicated. So today I want to show you some of the tricks that we use to get 3D from the screen into your living room. I'm Tim, and this is Learn TV. There's plenty of interest in 3D at the moment for a number of reasons. The most important is the fact that this 3D, unlike that found in cinema bubbles in the past, is being designed for use in the home. So it's live sport and movies and documentaries and of course gaming on the PlayStation 3. And Sony is there for all of it, with not just great 3D TVs but also 3D capturing cameras, bio computers and of course a wide range of content. As one of the largest media companies in the world, Sony has been involved in all of the major 3D events in the past year or so, including supplying 3D cameras for James Cameron's avatar, as well as the FIFA Football World Cup. Sony Pictures and Sony Pictures Animation have also been involved in some of the largest 3D movies in the past year or so, including Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs, Resident Evil Afterlife, and a whole range more yet to come. Fortunately, you also no longer need a Hollywood-sized budget or a private screening room in order to be able to enjoy great 3D in your own home. Sony is developing products that are designed to make viewing 3D as comfortable and as easy to do as with your ordinary, what we call in the trade, 2D TV. So before you can really understand what 3D is all about, you need to understand how 3D images are created. Regular two-dimensional images are created using vertical and horizontal detail. That third dimension is depth, so being able to look beyond and even around objects. Now the way we see depth in the real world is that our two eyes see a slightly different angle on an object. Our brain can use that information to determine the distances to objects in front of us. But of course that slight change in angle isn't the only thing that our brain can use to determine depth in an image. In fact, there's a whole range of different prompts that our brain can use to allow us to do things like throw a paper ball into a rubbish bin, or drink without spilling it, or <clears throat> find the perfect mate. Things like focus, perspective, occlusion, where objects in front block those behind, the way light and shadows fall, colour, contrast and relative motion all help us to identify the distances in the world around us. Now while we shouldn't get too hung up on those things at the moment, it's important to keep them in the back of your mind, because those are the kinds of things that allow Sony TVs to magically convert 2D images into 3D images. Sony engineers have spent years studying the way that we see things in the world in order that we can create quite a convincing effect when you push that 3D button on your Sony TV remote. But we're going to cover that in a bit more detail in a future episode of Learn TV. So if part of seeing depth in the real world is seeing different images with each eye, then any display that offers 3D needs to be able to replicate that experience. Now over the years they've tried it with a number of different technologies. Many of you, for example, will remember 3D Viewmasters from when you were kids. With a Viewmaster you're literally looking at a different image for each eye. The trouble with them is that it's a fairly personal experience. So if you want to have a few friends or family around to enjoy 3D with you, you're going to need to go for a bigger display, such as a cinema screen or a TV. 3D at the movies and on TV has traditionally been done in one of three ways. It should already be pretty obvious to you that in order to produce an image with depth on a flat surface, it's going to require some trickery. So you can set up a physical barrier that forces your eyes to see different images from different angles. Or you can put some kind of filter between you and the screen in order to filter out the left eye images for the left eye and the right eye images for the right eye. Or you can simply play back the images sequentially, left eye, right eye, left eye, right eye, in such a way that our eyes and therefore our brain are fooled into combining those images into a single image with depth. 
Let's get the versions out of the way that don't require glasses first, because I know most of you would prefer not to have to don glasses every time you wanted to just watch some 3D TV. So the first option is simple. You grab the left and the right image, and you play them back, one after another, really fast. The experience is pretty jarring, but it does give some depth to the image. Glasses-less 3D screens, sometimes also known as auto-stereoscopic screens, are a bit more technical than that. They use technologies like a lenticular surface, where the left and the right images are directed at different angles to your eyes via a ribbed surface on the screen. Or parallax barrier, where tiny visual barriers cause our eyes to see one image or another based on the angles at which our eyes are viewing the image. There are plenty of reasons why technologies like these are not typically used for most 3D TVs or in the movies. The first is they tend to have quite a narrow viewing angle, which means in order to get the optimum viewing angle, you need to be sitting more or less directly in front of the screen, making them less useful for living room environments where you want your friends and your family to be able to gather around in front of the screen. They are, however, very good for small personal displays or for public displays for advertising and the like. The other thing about screens like this is that they tend to add significantly to the cost of the screen itself. And what's worse is that they reduce the image quality or in many cases actually limit you to being able to only use those screens for 3D viewing. Obviously most of what we watch is still just in those two dimensions. So Sony wanted to make sure that any 3D products that they created gave you great 2D performance as well as offering 3D viewing when required. Now there's no doubt that over time auto stereoscopic or glasses 3D will become the norm, but it's going to take a little bit longer. And in the meantime, in order to get the best 3D experience, unfortunately it does mean donning those glasses. You've most likely come across Anaglyph 3D before. Using coloured glasses like these is the cheapest way to go 3D. You simply need a plain colour screen. These images are created by capturing left and right eye images, combining them together and then adjusting the colour on them slightly so that when you put the glasses on, the red tinted images for the right eye are filtered out using the blue filter and the blue tinted images for the left eye are filtered out using the red filter. Unfortunately, all that filtering comes at the cost of both image quality and also watchability. If you've ever watched much in the way of motion images using anaglyph, you'll notice that there's a lot of what's called crosstalk. If you haven't come across the term crosstalk before, it's worth being familiar with. It refers to the amount of the left image visible in the right eye, and vice versa. 3D technologies with a lot of crosstalk result in blurred images and can make 3D images virtually impossible to watch. With anaglyph, the slightest change in colour settings on a TV or a display, for example, can reduce the amount of the left image being filtered out by the right, and so on. Suffice to say, Sony uses ultra-high speed imaging technologies in order to reduce the amount of crosstalk. And fortunately, filtered glasses have come quite a long way since the days of anaglyph. If you've been to a 3D movie recently, you likely viewed it through glasses developed by companies like IMAX, RealD, or Dolby. The Dolby glasses actually also use a type of colour filtering system, but with a much better name, Wavelength Multiplex Visualisation, where, like Anaglyph, the glasses filter different coloured light to each eye. What's different about these, and what makes them so much better than Anaglyph, is that they use special projectors to produce an image in such a way that a full colour image is available for each eye, resulting in excellent 3D image quality. The other popular method of displaying 3D at the cinema is by using polarised light. Now without getting too technical, light can travel in waves. So if you want to think of it simply, it could be a horizontal or a vertical wave. If you display images simultaneously on a screen, but one is polarised in one direction and the other in the opposite direction, you can use the opposing polariser to filter the image respectively. Now that sounds pretty technical, but it's actually easy enough to explain, using a standard photographic filter, a polarised filter, and an LCD TV. Now the light coming out from an LCD TV because of the structure of the screen is also polarised. So if I take this polarised filter and twist it, you can see that it blocks light in one direction, but not the other. At the same time, light that is not polarised is not affected in any way.
This kind of polarization of light is called linear polarization because it affects the light completely only in one direction. Of course in practice, if you watched a movie using this technology, it would mean that you wouldn't be able to tilt your head because you'd lose the 3D effect. So modern cinemas, including those using the Real D system, use what's called circular polarization. And circular polarization cleverly rotates the light in a circular clockwise or counterclockwise direction, allowing you to tilt your head and still retain the 3D effect. Now they actually use circular polarization on some TVs as well, although it's rare, because it adds substantially to the cost, and in order to be able to display both the left and the right images simultaneously on screen, you end up halving the resolution of the picture. So you're not able to achieve the full HD 3D that is possible using other systems such as those found on the Sony 3D Bravia models. Of course you actually don't need to know any of this in order to enjoy 3D. But hopefully it will help you to understand why Sony and most of the other manufacturers have chosen another option for displaying 3D on our range of TVs. And that is a technology called Frame Sequential 3D. Frame Sequential 3D works in a similar way to the images that I showed you earlier. Left image, right image, but it just happens at a much faster rate. It still requires glasses, but the glasses are designed to shut your eyes sequentially in time with the video that is being displayed on the screen. The trouble with simply playing sequential left and right images is that as you speed them up, they simply start to blur together. You have no way of showing only the relevant image to each eye, and the brain can't keep up. So the most common way of shuttering the eyes is using electronic glasses with tiny LCD panels which block the view of the right eye when the left image is displayed on screen and then block the view of the left eye when the right image is playing. By playing the video back at twice the normal frame rate, you get a full screen for the right eye followed by a full screen for the left eye and the electronic glasses synchronized with the TV ensure your brain creates a high quality 3D image. There are several benefits to this method used by Sony and others. The first is that you get a full high resolution image for each of the left and the right eye, what we describe as full HD 3D. The second really important benefit is that this system can be employed on high quality 2D TVs without affecting 2D picture performance. So you get a great 2D TV and then 3D when you need it. Of course, the electronic glasses require batteries and must be in wireless contact with the TV in order to synchronize that very precise timing. And for manufacturers of 3D glasses which need to suit both plasma TVs as well as LCD TVs, there is a risk of flicker. Sony's unique approach to the design of our glasses, however, helps to address these risks. And we're going to talk about that a little bit more in another episode of Learn TV about the specific benefits of Sony 3D. So hopefully that's got your mind around some of the considerations that go into creating great 3D. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.